And then I went to graduate school in University of Pennsylvania. By that point, um, I was training under Alexandra Soka, who's an ADCC champion, world champion, Brazilian champion, I think Pan Am champion, uh, all in black. Um, he's yeah, 145 like me, super, super good gi, and also super, super good no-gi, which is more my goals. I tend to be a no-gi guy. Uh, my first instructor was a no-gi guy and really got me to sort of love that game and, and the fluidity and openness of that game. Um, at UPenn, I studied positive psychology, so uh, traditional psychology focuses a little bit more on fixing human detriments, like. Uh, dealing with depression or treating bipolar and different things along those lines. Not always, but tends to. Positive psychology tends to focus more on human flourishing. So um, I, my focus was more on goal setting. Um, how, what are like the mental triggers and factors in teaching that and executing that effectively and also skill acquisition. So I studied uh, researchers and got to meet up with researchers like um, uh, Anders Ericsson and uh, the founders of goal setting theory. I got to talk to uh, Locke and Latham. Um, just hardcore as much research as I possibly could and now I write for a bunch of Jiu Jitsu magazines. I uh, have some blogs up there, won the Nogi Pan Ams at Brown Belt recently and uh, just keep doing Jiu Jitsu and loving it. From like a really logistical standpoint, it, it really comes down to having a, a confidence and some degree of a game plan so I'm, I'm kind of a believer in that. Um, I think that there is such a thing as the guy who like wakes up you know, two weeks and it's been kind of training on and off and just is like, oh damn, yeah, I got to fight. Oh, I don't even know who's against, but I'm just going to step. I think those guys exist, uh, but I think as the game progresses, it's going to become uh, more and more serious. So um, when, when I think about seriousness in sport, I would think about the Olympics. And generally speaking, at the Olympic level, people have multiple coaches, um, super world-class training partners, their practices are being analyzed, the competition footage is being broken down, generally speaking, I think MMA is going that route. So, um, uh, I don't necessarily break down statistics, but for me it's very important that we get a game plan together. So who is this guy? Let's watch footage, let's break that down. Um, what is your game? What are your strengths? What do we want to leverage moving forward in this fight? And then how do we want to structure our training moving forward? A lot of it's also going to be uh, competition simulation. So if you want to compete in MMA and it's going to be three five minute rounds, well, you better be doing practice that somewhat simulates that. At the same point, you can't be doing live 15 minutes of death MMA every single week. So how do we simulate that cardio-wise? How do we simulate that strength and endurance-wise? How do we simulate that intensity-wise but not simulate that injury-wise? So building practice kind of around those ideas, uh, getting the simulation. I'm a firm believer that uh, competition is a lot more than really, really being good at the sport. Competition is being good at competing. And in order to get that, you've got to put yourself under the fire. You have to have multiple fresh training partners getting thrown at you and really simulate as much of that intensity as possible. So um, game planning and effective simulation just leading right up to the fight. That's kind of the biggest principles I focus on. So very rarely is the, the super sharp MMA guy, the guy who kind of half-assed baseball and just didn't like it and played golf but then like was horrible at it and didn't even really try and didn't really care and then was the same in lacrosse and they found MMA and they were super dedicated. Oftentimes um, achievement is like a quality more so than it is like a specific thing. I think that um, people who are super successful in business are often the same in sport or in other different domains. So um, I think that they're all, generally speaking, again, just guys I've talked to, so Ben Asprey and Lozon, uh, the Jiu Jitsu guys, um, competitive by nature, tend to really want to push themselves and sort of be better than the other guy, and at the same time, um, at the same time, have, uh, have just a, a sort of an achievement sort of bend to them. They just aim to be at the top in whatever it is that they do. And also, I also think just, to throw it out there, um, really high level achievers in particular sports aren't always necessarily the guys who are super competitive and it's like, man, I just want to be better than everybody and screw them and I'm going to be the man and it's like hardcore egoic. We could always argue that that is the base motive, right? We could argue that for anything. But at the same time, I think the guys who have sustained motivation are often the guys who also love the game, who also can really enjoy a practice and really relish in the growth and the experience and the richness and the flourishing of their skills and the teaching of that stuff. Um, I think that the guys that draw motivation from, from other more sustainable um, mental pillars than simply like crushing other people and being the man and getting the ladies, you know what I mean? I think that only goes so far.